So a year ago, I was here on this very same stage, and we had just had an event in New York City where we announced Hedera Hashgraph and published a white paper and explained to the world what we were doing. And here we are now a year later, and I'm happy to give you an update, provide a summary uh, of what we've done, again, what the project's all about, and where we are today. So it all began in 2012, where Dr. Lehman Baird, my co-founder, had a vision for how the internet should work. Basically, he wanted to make it possible for anybody to reach out and grab a slice of cyberspace and be able to invite others to join this world, this shared world, to work together, to play together, to buy and sell goods and services with one another without the need to trust a third party with their privacy and, and information. And it needed to work really fast and securely. Over the next three years, he came up with today what we call the hash graph. And we first got traction in the credit union industry in a permissioned world uh, in North America. And in 2017, we decided to create a public network based on the hash graph algorithm. When we did, made that decision, we observed that there were really four fundamental obstacles to mainstream adoption of public distributed ledger technology. The first is performance. Everyone knows that the public networks are too slow. Um, Hashgraph, when we launch the beta version, which will happen this summer, we anticipate it will be able to accomplish tens of thousands of transactions per second. And when it's fully optimized with version one later this year, we expect to be more than 100,000 transactions per second. And it's with seconds of consensus latency. And the con finality is not probabilistic. It's 100% certainty on the order of transactions. So within a few seconds, the receiver of the token or the transaction will know for certain that the transaction is final. And it's proof of stake, so the cost is actually hard to measure. The, the hard costs associated with the given transaction are so tiny they're hard to measure. Of course, if we're building a public network that has these kinds of capabilities, and it ends up being used to transfer billions or trillions of dollars of value, then you know it's gonna be attacked. And so we wanted from the beginning to maximize performance while concurrently achieving the theoretical limit of what's possible in terms of security at the algorithm level. Hashgraph does both. It achieves something called asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance while also maximizing the performance possible given that level of security. Those were the two technical requirements. We observed there were other requirements as well that are sort of not technical. One is stability. We, we knew that because everything is open source in the market, that the existing platforms were going to hard fork or split into competing platforms and competing cryptocurrencies. This causes chaos for anybody that builds an enterprise grade application on top of one of these where the state of the application also gets hard forked into two separate networks. When that happens, client software that connects to one of the nodes doesn't know which network is the official network. You have client software connecting to nodes in both and the state of the application diverges. It creates chaos. Everyone understands this and it has to be resolved. It has, it has to be possible that you can make a guarantee to the market that the platform is not gonna fork in that way or split into competing platforms before enterprises and businesses are gonna spend millions of dollars building real applications on top of these networks. I'll, I'll describe how we address the stability problem in a moment. And then finally, if you can solve these three problems, governance is what's left. Who is the organization? Who are those that are making decisions about what the product roadmap might be? You know, governing the network. So let's talk about governance first. These are the types of decisions we mean when we say governance. 
What features are going to be added to the platform? When are they going to be added? What are the fees being charged for the use of the platform? What are the rates being paid to the nodes in the network? Who is responsible for treasury management? And on and on and on. The governance of the actual business, if you will, of the network. When we think about governance, at a high level, sort of a philosophical level, here is one model for how to think about it. We have four different governance models, dictatorship, democracy, an expert council, and anarchy. Across the horizontal axis, you can see, is the ability to make complex decisions, going from low to high. A direct democracy isn't really well suited for making complex decisions. For example, it doesn't make a lot of sense for everyone that holds a dollar to vote on monetary policy because people that hold dollars, dollars generally don't know anything about monetary policy. A dictator, though, maybe does. And if they do, then they have the ability to make really complex decisions. The vertical access is the level of trust. Trust that the governing body itself won't be corrupted, going from low to high. A direct democracy is more trustworthy in that sense than maybe a dictator is because it's a lot easier to compromise a single individual rather than a large population. An expert council has elements, the best elements of both. An expert council can make complex decisions, but because it's a council and not a single individual, they're less likely to be compromised. Most of the DLT industry has that form of governance. There is some form of an expert council. The problem is that because the entire space is made up of pure open source projects, the governing body doesn't have the ability to compel those using the network to adopt the changes. In other words, it can make the rules, but it can't do anything to compel the market to adopt the rules. And when some portion of the market disagrees with the approach, what happens? They decide to split. Some portion of the miners go and create another uh, competing network. Well, if you can't enforce the rules, then you don't really have the ability to govern in a meaningful way, and it slides into chaos. And of course, that's what we've seen over the past year. So what's required for strong governance? One, the governing body has to be able to enforce the changes with the nodes. Those that are running the software have to be compelled to adopt the changes. Number two, the client software that's connecting to the networks, to the nodes, to use the services, they have to know when they connect to a node, it's actually running the latest software, that it's part of the official network. And then finally, the governing body needs to be able to prevent a forking of the state of the network. Here's how we accomplish that in Hedera. We have technical controls and legal controls. Technically, the, govern the, the network itself has an identifier. And if, hypothetically, the network were to fork and some of the nodes create a new network, when the client software connects to the nodes, it can tell whether the nodes are a part of the official network or not. And this identifier is unforgeable. Also, we can enforce simultaneous upgrades to all the nodes so that all the nodes are running the same logic on all the transactions at the same moment in time. In addition to that, we have legal controls. Hashgraph, as an algorithm, is patented. And I know that there is a lot of controversy around this decision. But we're using the patent to accomplish a specific goal. We're treating the program or the project very similarly to an open source project in that with version 1.0 of the code base, we will publish it on GitHub. It'll be open, transparent. You all will be able to read every single line of code. So full transparency in the software. Secondly, there's no license that's required to use it on Hedera. It's sort of like Ethereum. If you want to use the network, you make API calls with your application or DAP, and when you make the API calls, you pay for that API call using the cryptocurrency, HBARs, that's what we call them. So 
Transparency, no license required, but we will not give license to a competing network, or we are gonna prevent the forking of the network so that we can bring a commitment to the market that this network will be stable in fundamental ways, stable enough that mainstream apps or dApps, enterprises, medium, small businesses, the full range, will be comfortable building on top of the platform. We eliminate that risk. So who is the governing council? There were 39 members at scale. There will be 39 members in the governing council. They have been chosen to be representative of the entire market. So it's not a bunch of banks. There are 18 sectors of the market that we want representation from. There will be two banks, perhaps. They're cross-sector geo-distributed, so they're not all from a single jurisdiction or geography or market, geo-distributed, and they're term limited. They can't stay members forever. They can stay members for up to six years. The term is three years. They can serve two, three-year consecutive terms. They are owners of the organization. It's a corporation. It's an LLC based in Delaware. They are members of the LLC in fact, they hire and fire the CEO. They can fire me if they want to fire me. They have control, okay? So we announced just a few weeks ago the first five members. Deutsche Telekom is one of the governing members. Of course, they're the largest telco in Europe. DLA Piper is a global, one of the largest global law firms Magazine Louisa is one of the largest retailers, online retailers in Central and South America. Nomura, global financial institution and bank based out of Tokyo. And Swisscom Blockchain, another major telco in Europe. These are the first five. And these are sort of representative of the caliber of council members that we're looking for. There will be more members announced in the coming weeks, and through the rest of this year, we will scale up to the full 39. So the initial network is being run by these members. It starts off being a network of nodes run by the council members. And that has everything to do with what's required for bootstrapping a cryptocurrency using our proof of stake model. But we will go to a sharded solution and when we go to a sharded solution, anybody who wants to run a node in the network will be able to do so. It will be a permissionless network, public network, and there's, there will be node fees. You know, the, the nodes will be paid in cryptocurrency for the services they provide in processing transactions. So we expect it scale for this to scale to tens of thousands or more nodes in the network. So, like I'd mentioned, we started a year ago. We announced what we were doing. Last year, we were really focused on several things. We raised $124 million to fund the project. We started soliciting potential council members to join us. We did a lot of software development, and we had our first Hedera hackathon, global hackathon, and council, uh, excuse me, and developer conference in October in Dallas, Texas. We've published the things that are required for the developer community to go ahead and start building dApps. And we have now more than 300 dApps being built on test networks. This year, our focus is beginning to change. We have started, we finished the first community test program and we've rolled those changes back into the platform, the necessary updates back into the platform. In the next few weeks, we will start the second phase of community testing, where we will go from just the first 5,000 accounts that were created, we will allow up to 100,000 accounts to be created, and the platform will go live. We will launch the platform this summer. So what does the future, the immediate future look like? It's a lot of testing. We're hardening the network. We continue to add council members. We'll launch the platform this summer. This is the stack. So at the bottom, you can see the Hashgraph consensus algorithm. 
that handles comms across all the nodes and puts transactions in order. On top of that, cryptocurrency. With native support for micropayments, Alice can pay Bob one one hundredth or one one thousandth of a cent and do so economically, and it doesn't require side channels or side chains or anything else. It's on graph. Smart contracts, it's solidity as a starting point. There will be other smart contract engines in the future, but to start, it's solidity. And then a distributed file service that is Byzantine. And what that means is that when you store a file, you can be guaranteed that the file has been stored with the formal proof. But more importantly, if you delete a file, you get a proof that the file's actually been deleted. And this is important when we think about privacy concerns and GDPR and all of these regulatory concerns that, that companies and enterprises have to deal with. This, this stack is managed by the Hedera Governing Council and it enables the creation of arbitrarily complex distributed applications. So I've already mentioned, we did our first phase of community testing and we got 5,000 accounts with less than two weeks. Phase two will kick off soon. And we've got more than 300 dApps. So the last thing I want to comment on is that we are building an enterprise grade public ledger for enterprise grade solutions. The council itself is a fantastic customer advisory board. The council members have joined the council because they have use cases and they need a network like what we're offering. The fact that they get to help govern it is just icing on the cake. The council members don't get paid dividends. The revenue that flows into the network from the use of the services flows into treasury. It pays the operational expenses of the organization. It pays for the development of the platform on an ongoing basis, the maintenance, et cetera. And it gets paid out to all the nodes in the network that are providing the services. In this way, we are building the first enterprise grade public DLT that is sustainable, that addresses the concerns of the mainstream market. And that's it. Thank you.